Hey kid, do you think Lilim have nipples? <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint, and welcome back to a little bit more of VA11 Hall A. Now, we ended the last episode by going through everything on our phone, including the blogs and the augmented eye and things like that, and we just got done meeting a lady named Kira Miki. And if you remember back, one of the things that Jill wanted was to go ahead and buy the song by Kira Miki called Your Love is a Drug. And then it just kind of hit me that there's a bunch of songs in here that have question marks, things like that. So I went to my phone, I was like, oh, wait a sec, we can actually listen to this song. So I kind of want to play it right now, just to uh, see what it sounds like, see what Kira Miki's all about. So I think what I'll do, is I'm going to put this song inside the playlist at the bar. And if we're lucky, maybe Kira Miki will show up, and we'll be able to talk to her while her song is playing, and maybe we'll get some different dialogue out of her, I'm not sure. I feel like there's a bunch of different conditions that affect the dialogue in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of them, because there was a point earlier in the game where someone mentioned that they liked the music that was playing. Would not be surprised if Kira Miki would like to hear her own song, because she kind of seems full of herself. <laughs> but with that, we already checked out everything on her phone, so let's just go to work and see what the next night brings, huh? Thursday, December 15th, and if you recall, December 17th is when things are really gonna go down here. So we got two days, tonight and tomorrow, to just kind of like be okay with the world. And I think the 17th, there's gonna be a lot of really interesting things, perhaps bad things that happen within this game. Good evening! Oh, hi there. Ooh, who are you? I was expecting the bar to be different before opening hours, but I guess it's just the same tired thing. Who are you, Alma? Alma? Ah, oh, Leonidas! <laughs> Does nobody know what this guy's name is? Gillian. Marcelo! I stumbled across her on the way in and asked her if she wanted to take along. Hope you don't mind. Sure, make yourself at home. Where's boss? She didn't put on the helmet again, did she? She went out for a bit. I don't know what for, but she'll be back. Alright. I'm gonna make yourself comfortable while I prepare. Right, thanks. Perfect, so my preparation is really just me getting new music in here, so I'm gonna go ahead flip out this song and then try to add in the song from Kira Miki and see if she likes it. Because if she's gonna visit, it would probably be today, or it'll be considerably in the future. I feel like she's gonna come back, so let's put that right there, kind of at the top in case she comes in right away, and maybe we'll have a chance to talk to her here, I don't know. Time to mix drinks and change lives! <laughs> Dude, your hair. What is going on with your hair up here? <laughs> what was that? Ah, oh, just something they made me say back in the instruction. It, it kind of stuck. Huh. I went to a school that made us stand up with our hands on our backs when someone came in. Oh. That habit didn't rub off until high school or so. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Oh, yeah, look at this. A glass with a signature? To j j j um... I'll assume it's either an autograph or an impromptu medicine recipe. Ha <laughs> ha! That's... Kira! Miki girl came here yesterday before her concert, actually. Oh, yeah! Now I see her name here. You don't seem very surprised. I like B-Link more, actually. The stoic-looking duo, right? Yeah, those guys. Seems like you had a better day than mine yesterday, though. I had to break up with Damien. Uh-oh! We're getting into relationship advice here. Okay, so if you haven't been around for this game, we pretty much hit on, like, so many major topics regarding the human psyche and human life and things like that, and like how people just kind of like deal with society. Human society, I think, is a better way to put it, not human life. Be it how people ingest the news and the media, be it how people lie, be it how people are affected by music, the list goes on and on. People, be it how people are affected by pornography. So many things have come up in this game, and I am not surprised at all that we're starting to talk about relationships now. I see, do you want a drink? You, you don't seem very surprised. Sorry. Alma, we've known each other for, what, a few months now? I'd be interested if those relationships of yours went further than a week or two. Oh! You say you broke up, but there's usually not enough time to foster something to break. It's more like uh, the guy wasn't what I wanted, so I stopped flirting. Ooh. You could pretend to be more interested, you know? Jeez. Like my mom says, if I don't buy it, it's because I know the product. <laughs> Speaking of buying, do you want a frame? What? A frame? Yeah, for all these pics you have of your boss. The ones filling your phone's memory. Some seem sneakily taken at that. Ooh. Is this true? What do you care? How the hell did you find that out anyway? So it is true! Shut up! 
I'm a hacker, remember? You shouldn't piss off a hacker. Ooh, you're a hacker. Oh, I really like this one of hers sleeping in her office. I think I'll take a copy of it. You. Hey, can you make me a bad touch before we keep arguing? Oh my god, sure. You. What a bitch. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be really interested to hear a little bit more of the hacker's perspective. Interesting. I mean, I started going off about how we might talk about relationships here, but... Going into the mind of a hacker would be really interesting, because I feel like there's a lot of people that hack with really bad intentions and for, like, selfish reasons, like trying to get money and things like that. But then I feel like there's also some people that hack for, like, good reasons, too, to, like, ruin people that are doing bad things. I don't know. It'll be interesting to hear what this lady has to say, so let's get this drink plump in here. Boom. Ba-dome. Boom. Ba-dome. Ooh, and a lot of karma trying. One, two, three, four. And then she wants it on the rocks and mixed. I can do that for you, baby. Boom. Let's give you a bad touch. Here! Who gives these drinks their silly names? Usually the one who registers it. Some people have quite the silly sense of humor. Like that girl who keeps laughing over this particular drink's name. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, who's Damien again? The one with the nice car. Sure, he's also the manager at the bank, but that car was what caught my eye. Oh my god, you are so shallow. And what was wrong with him? Turns out he was a LARPer. <laughs> you know what LARP is? I think it like live action roleplay. Oh my god, they still have that in the year 2070? It's amazing. LARP. Live action roleplaying, sure enough. Oh my gosh. Okay, at my college, there were LARPers. I, I think they were called like Bellagarth. Like they got offended if you called them LARPers. And go at it like medieval style where there's like two lines of people, they charge at each other, and they have like swords and shields. Some have bows, and some people get like really dressed up into the like cosplay part of it. And they like go out and just try to kill each other with these like foam weapons. And like they play by the rules, like if you hit them, they go ahead and they fall down, and then of course like some of them cheat and things like that. It's really fun to watch. Like, 20 people, 10 on each side, just like charging at each other like, Aah! And then, like when they when they first go in, they have like their battle cries that they go in and charge with. And they're like, "For Valhalla!" And then they just like go charge and start beating the shit out of each other. And like, 99% of the time, none of them actually have any sort of sword skills at all. So it's just like really, really funny to watch. <laughs> really funny to watch. At least that's how it was at my school. Maybe it's a bit more advanced in other places, and it's like a little bit more refined. And it's like, actually like, whoa, these guys are amazing. But the ones that I watched, oh my god. It was just... It was comedy. <laughs> Sounds more like a nickname of some very heavy-handed writer or a military organization. What do they roleplay as? Have you heard of the Woodstock Fairs? Those events where people barely dress, stink, and they roll in the mud and fuck in the open? Oh my god, Woodstock? That was like from the 1960s. Yeah, those hippies, yeah, those are called hippies. He frequents those, and it's something I'd rather not deal with at all. <laughs> If I stayed with him, I'd eventually have to. I mean, I need to support my partner and what he does, but what if it's something like that? You see? That's the problem right there. You say breaking up like you had something formal, but most of the time, it's just you're still getting to know him. Think about it. Have you ended your longest lasting relationships for things like those? Okay, sorry for not using the right word or whatever, but I'm still sorely disappointed. <laughs> and at least I'm trying to get some action. What was the last time you spent the night with someone else? Whoa! Last night. Whoa! No, you didn't. Your cat doesn't count, I was gonna say. A year ago, it was messy. See? I mean, I have no idea how you deal with that. If I were you, I would've pushed Fuckboy over there into a closet ages ago. <laughs> For Fuckboy? <laughs> People have different needs and different priorities. Yeah, but don't you miss having the warmth of someone else by your side? Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with theirs, putting your head on their chest, listening to them breathe as they pet your head, dozing off and knowing they're there, watching you, protecting you. Oh wow, she's really getting into this. Jill's like, whoa. Jill? <laughs> Anything I can make you to shut up and drink? Ha! <laughs> I'll have you know that my Uncle Juan taught me ventriloquism when I was 12. Okay. Drinking won't stop me from talking, <laughs> or making tasteless puns for Aunt Rosa. <laughs> Still, get me something weird, would ya? Ventriloquism. Weird? A weird drink. Yeah! 
Something different, experimental, uncommon. Oh, uh, let's see. Promo drink fits that bill easily. Okay, let's try it. Here you go, baby. Here you go. Yeah, this fits the bill. It's a promotional drink made to commemorate a movie. Read. They left at the chance to sell drinks that would be unmarketable otherwise. Oh. You know, your orders are weird today. They are? Yeah, usually the first thing you ask for is a Brantini. And then something like a Cobalt of Velvet or something similar. Well, sometimes I feel like I need something different, you know? Something tells me part of the reason you left Damien is because he was too deep in routine. Oh, wow. Maybe. Whoa, Jill! Damn! That was a deep one. Hey, speaking of routines. As a hacker, what's your opinion on the whole Alice Rabbit thing? Ooh. That's the silence of somebody who just heard something stupid. <laughs> stupid enough to warrant the speech they've prepared for occasions just like this. As always, very perceptive of you, Jill. <laughs> you know, decades ago, there was this group of people that hacked simple sites with an agenda. Can't remember what they used to call themselves, I just remember that. It was petty vandalism. Anyway, everyone that participated started using the same name. They wanted to create this anonymous anarchist identity. The whole Alice Rabbit thing is the logical conclusion of that. You're not talking about, like, the hacker group anonymous, are they? Oh my god. <laughs> it's what happens when that idea reaches its breaking point and goes mainstream. It's no longer a group, but an individual. An untouchable entity watching from the shadows, monitoring and judging everything anyone does. Observing, tolerating no one but itself. A lot of bullshit for what's essentially a pet the press made up. The antithesis of your usual boogeyman if you must. So you don't think such a person exists? I don't know, don't care. I mean, we have seen the actions of such an entity, but it might be anything. An individual, a group, an AI. That's not taking into account all the copycats and pranksters using that name. So, Alice Rabbit is a thing that exists, but it's also really muddied overall. There's something else that worries me, though. The kind of story always catches the attention of kids and such. They start trying to hack stuff without knowing the risks or the consequences. Imagine if, suddenly, a group of tweens broke into this bar and started asking for drinks. That's how it feels for me, and it's thanks to the damned Alice Rabbit thing. I see. But enough of that. There's a more pressing matter at hand. There is. Yeah! You've been delaying my invitations for hanging out sometime for too long! Oh, that. You hate me that much, Jill? Does my presence make you that uncomfortable? No, no, no. I. <laughs> at this rate, I might just crash by your apartment. That way you can't just say no. Maybe I'll also crash for the night. We could have a sleepover, braid our hair, tell stories all night, and shower together. You know you need some human warmth in that place. Your tits alone would fill my entire bathroom! <laughs> Man, you react too nonchalantly. It's no fun. React a little bit. Let me tease you for a second. I refuse. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, any particular reason you keep turning down my invitations? I mean, it's not a date, I just want to have a conversation with you outside these four walls. I'm, I'm not a morning person? I registered for a night shift precisely to avoid waking up early. The earliest I've asked you out is 10 a.m., you know. That is early morning by my standards. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I don't want to hang out, I just don't want to have to wake up early. You. Are. Hopeless. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna need another drink here. Like, let's say a Big Brantini. Finally, that's the alma I know. Big Brantini, easy enough, so let's go to name here. Oh wow, I can make it big, so I can double this up just like that, so I just put 12 in there. Oh, Jesus. Well, let's do it. Here we go, huge Brantini. Here you go. You know, Brantini is such a weird name. It was originally supposed to replicate the Martini. Problem is, the BTC got a hold of a brand of Vermouth. Problem is, the BTC got a hold of a brand of vermouth, and it was named after a certain automobile company. So, on a weird whim, they changed the name. I see. You know, I was wondering... Yeah? Don't you worry about what people you work for might be doing with the information you provide? Not really. You don't? 
Do you worry about what happens when people leave this place drunk? Not really. Most of the time. Oh god, I would worry. Well, neither do I. Why should you? Do you get people drunk? Some say my beauty is intoxicating, but that's besides the point. I get my payment, do my job, and forget about the whole thing. You make your job sound so easy. Once you understand what precautions to take, it's no problem. And I've always found my job fun. However, most of my contracts are consultancy-based gigs. It's not like every day is a thrill. Do you meet with your client, or...? No, I do not. It's always from behind as many filters as I can manage. I remember I once did a job where I had a couple of kids relaying letters. For security reasons, right? Actually, because that way I lose a lot less time. I don't have to deal with the clients hitting on me or pestering me after the job's done. I also don't have to lose time proving my worth because big boobs equals small brain or some shit like that. I mean, protecting my identity is one of the reasons, but the few times I've shown myself... Ugh. They weren't even risky or dangerous jobs, it was just run-of-the-mill security checks. I don't know, maybe I need to show up as a disheveled nerd or something like that, give them something that they expect to see. Or I just don't show up and save myself the trouble. Why all the questions? There's things I've been curious about and I always forget to ask. So many Alice Rabbit headlines have made me wonder about the hacking business too. Oh! I'll remember to ask you things next time then. Well, I'll take my leave now, see ya! Take care. Hmm, hello, sugar. Ow! Oh god, hello, Mr. Donovan. <laughs> like my pop used to say, never touch the ass of a woman with metallic arms. What? I think that's more like plastic and carbon fiber. They're hard as fuck and that's all my abdomen felt. Do you normally greet people that way? I'm a man that can't contain himself when he sees something he likes, kid. Oh, but don't worry, you're safe. You're flatter than the field at my summer house? Oh my god! Mr. Donovan is always an experienced man. I love this guy. Like, he's such a douche, but he's just like so interesting to talk to. A uh, bit of advice, you shouldn't provoke the one serving you drinks or food. Oh, don't be offended, kid. You have your audience, I'm just not a part of it. Today, I'm making this a quick one, I gotta tend to business in a while. Having said that, I'll just have the usual. Usual, he says. Mr. Donovan wants the usual. Three days, he already has a usual drink. <laughs> Which I believe is a big beer, right? So let's go and get him a big beer. Here you go, Mr. Donovan. The usual. Sure, it's a work. So what brings you here today, Mr. Donovan? That girl I interviewed yesterday is coming again in a couple of weeks. So, I was working to clinch an exclusive interview. Did you succeed? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I'm Donovan D. Dawson. I always get what I want. Sure, I had to blackmail the editors of other outlets, but the end result is all that matters. <laughs> Mr. Donovan! Okay, someone said he kind of looks like Steve Harvey. <laughs> kind of does. I see. Wait, blackmail? You'd be surprised the kind of stuff you find out when you get the right people drunk. Hmm? Hey, the signature on that glass over there. Oh, yeah. That big titted Lilim was here? Yeah, she came here yesterday before the concert, yeah. Anything juicy come out of her visit? No. <laughs> Gossip worthy? No. Tabloid worthy? No. Come on, there's gotta be something. Well, her love for what she does is so honest and pure that anyone who tries to ruin it should be ashamed. Ooh! No, don't give me that shit. Throw me a bone here, anything? I got nothing. Everyone has a prize. How much for you to spill the beans? Seriously, nothing happened. Yeah, she said nothing that could be used against her or that you didn't already know. Fine. Hey, kid. Do you think Lilim have nipples? <laughs> uh, excuse me? I mean, I've seen a couple of pornos where they have them, but they could be modded, you know? So yesterday, while interviewing the singer Lilim chick, I kept wondering if those tits had nipples. <laughs> I mean, I'd be fine without them, but the curiosity is just killing me. <laughs> but I'm even more curious about the engineers that designed them. Ooh. Can you picture a room full of people discussing whether or not the tits on a Lilim look good? <laughs> A bunch of guys in a lesbo engineer. <laughs> Wondering if the latest model's vagina is good enough. 
Man, God bless those sons of bitches. <laughs> Excuse me? Any interesting preview of tomorrow's news? You expect me to share my information when you wouldn't share the scoop on a singer? How can I share when there's honestly nothing to share? Uh-huh. I'm gonna be a good citizen today and let this one pass. Have you heard of a group called the Harbingers? 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 Not really, no. There's some group wanting to overthrow the White Knights. I read their manifesto in the bathroom once. Interesting piece and even better makeshift toilet paper. <laughs> they talk about how the organization is corrupt, full of mob bosses or something like that. I think I heard about that somewhere, one of them. They sent a message to some of the outlets saying that they have proof of their claims. That they're gonna release it to the public tomorrow. Oh. That'd be interesting to see, I think. I know, right? Alright, kid. Give me a Bleeding Jane so I can call it a day. Okay. Bleeding Jane, that's a change of pace. Let's do it up here. One Bleeding Jane coming up. Here you go, buddy. Simple enough for you, I see. So, I heard about this Dana Zane's bar. Is this true? Yep. Never thought I'd hear about the undefeated of the West again. More so after that incident with the bears. Where is she? She's out running some air. Uh, yeah, the bears. <laughs> Six years ago, a cash strapped Dana Zane entered the underground ring for money. Faced ten enraged grizzly bears, she beat them all without killing them. What? I heard she set them free afterwards, too. <laughs> and you were there. I was drunk and bored. What can I say? Do you know if she lost her arm there? I can't remember. Too drunk. Maybe she had her prosthetic then, too. I heard someone there suggest that she lost it after throwing a baseball out of some stadium. My god. Threw it so hard her arm fell right off. <laughs> but that sounds more like an unsubstantiated rumor. More like something she made up. Oh my god, we'll never know the secret of her arm. <laughs> well, I gotta go. Next time you see Dana, thank her for winning me a second yacht. I knew betting on her was the right choice. Please, come again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Mr. Donovan. Oh my god, are we already done? Is that my break time? No way! No way! I mean, I guess I don't gotta tell her it's break time, but oh my god, that's totally it. Well, I guess we're gonna save here. Pop on into here. And we've been breaking every single time we save, so we've been going for a little while. I think this is a good time to go ahead and cut it off, so thank you guys! So much for being a part of this episode. You guys let me know if these are long enough or if they need to be longer. Anybody who's like familiar with the game, let me know if I'm going at too slow of a pace for the episodes that are coming out. I don't really know how long this game is supposed to be, but I feel like we're making progress. I don't know if the game ends on the 17th or what. Maybe you shouldn't tell me that, but just let me know if we're going fast enough here. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have been enjoying a little bit of Valhalla. Interesting meeting a couple or a new character here. It was Alma and she is the lady that can hack people's computers, hack people's databases, like that. It was kind of interesting talking to a hacker, and she's also having relationship problems, so that was kind of fun too. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, go ahead and hit that like button. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you haven't already, as always, go ahead and subscribe. That way you can see the next video that we do around here. But, without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Meow. Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint and welcome to a game called VA11 Hall A, also known as Valhalla. This is a game that has a 98% of